Eugene, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Look, there were no polls allowed during the election campaign. Can you tell us why this is? Well, this has been a long-standing practice uh, since Singapore became independent. Um, and the view taken by the authorities, uh, the election officials, is that um, voters shouldn't be unnecessarily or unduly influenced uh, by these polls, um, you know, and of which you know the, the concerns are, you know, how representative are these polls? You know, would they be driven by any particular political uh, considerations? So I think when you uh, consider how uh, opinion polls, exit polls, may have affected uh, election outcomes in other countries, I think there is merit in 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 having this restriction. Ultimately, you know, each country will define what is it that works for them. Uh, and, and in Singapore, you know, we have decided uh, that opinion polls or exit polls, um, you know, are something that uh, should not be permitted uh, during the course of the election campaign. In your view, how have the uh, various parties performed in the campaign, given that public rallies have not been part of this election? Yes, yeah, so this is an election conducted, you know, amid uh, the global pandemic. Um, so there are severe uh, restrictions um, of which, you know, the, the public rallies, which are very much a, a, a highlight of previous uh, general elections, you know, those are not permitted. Um, and there are also safe distancing requirements as well. So in many ways, you know, the campaign has moved significantly online, um, but parties also realize that they need to walk the ground. They need to work the ground. Uh, and so, you know, in many ways, they are stretched. Um, I would say that uh, the parties across the polit political spectrum have adapted very well uh, to, to this very challenging circumstances um, that under which this election is being conducted. Uh, and I would also say that uh, voters have also um, adapted very well. Um, you know, many of us have gone um, online. Many of us are following the discussion. Um, the authorities have also provided for more uh, free to air uh, TV airtime, you know, for candidates and parties to to share their campaign messages, their manifestos. Um, so, in in many ways, you know, I, I think um, despite the, the the limitations, despite the the challenges, um, I would say that everyone has has risen to the occasion, um, and and I think there has been the opportunity, you know, for effective campaigning for voters to, to receive, uh, you know, campaign messages. Um, certainly, you know, we all miss um, the fiscal rallies, you know, but here we are, you know, we are where we are and, and we just have all have to adapt. Analysts are predicting the ruling party, the People's Action Party or PAP, to win with a reduced majority. What are the key concerns amongst voters other than management of the virus? I think in, in this election, um, Issues that have come to the forefront um, revolve around um, COVID-19, um, but there are issues which are COVID-19 related. Um, so certainly one would be the issue of um, immigration, uh, particularly the, the question of whether Singapore has too many uh, foreign professionals uh, working in Singapore. Um, so the concern with jobs, with livelihoods, job security, uh, wages, you know, in, in this current economic downturn, uh, that, of course, has given uh, immigration, um, you know, a, a fairly high saliency uh, in this uh, general election. Parties are locking horns on that. But beyond the bread and butter issues, beyond the concerns of whether Singapore is handling, uh, you know, the public health dimensions as well as the economic uh, repercussions of, of, of the pandemic, I think issues have also shifted towards uh, you know, post-material values. So by that, I mean uh, values which are such as, you know, what should define Singapore? Uh, how should society be, how should wealth in society be, be distributed? Um, you know, climate change issues. Um, while these issues have different amount of um, traction with voters, uh, you know, I would uh, take the position uh, that in many respects, uh, you know, these are some of the issues, uh, you know, that voters have been captivated by. Um, and there is also the question of, you know, whether a one-party dominant system uh, in which the ruling People's Action Party, um, in the last parliament, they held about 92% of all elected seats. 
you know, whether that sort of arrangement uh, would continue to, to, to be good for Singapore in, in the short uh, as well as in the, in, in the long term. So voters do have you know, a whole gamut of issues that they will have to deal with um, as they head to the polls, um, you know, as, as they are at the polls. You know, and, and, and I think um, we have uh, before us, you know, a, a very keenly contested uh, general election. Are many Singaporeans, uh, Eugene, concerned about issues of governance, uh, lack of opposition to the ruling party and media control? I, I think they are, although I, I wouldn't say that, you know, they are the sort of uh, issues that will be game changers. Um, the concern with governance, right, so the question of whether a one-party dominant system will ultimately work for Singapore, I think that has uh, come under a lot of scrutiny uh, in this particular general election. Um, but what is also useful to bear in mind, you know, even as, uh, even as voters, you know, question uh, and consider, you know, the sort of governance framework, you know, in terms of the balance between um, the ruling party and the opposition parties, um, is, you know, the, the view uh, among voters that, yes, you know, a healthy and credible opposition in Singapore's parliament uh, is part of the whole process of getting the system of checks and balances to work. Uh, but the Singaporean voter would also want uh, the opposition to be a credible one. So they are not going to vote um, the opposition for opposition's sake. Um, but And by the same token, you know, it would also mean that if you have, uh, you know, an opposition candidate or, or a slate of candidates for a particular constituency, um, you know, that, that demonstrates that they are deserving, uh, then I think voters would be uh, certainly be inclined to support them, you know, notwithstanding, uh, you know, the fact that the ruling party has generally, you know, done done a good job in, in, in running the country, you know, although, of course, you know, there, there will be differences to, uh, to that view, um, you know, in terms of um, issues, you know, such as uh, social inequalities, uh, the question of whether the government can be more responsive to voters' concerns, um, you know, so again, uh, you know, this election will also uh, reflect some of those concerns that voters have. It's uh, really interesting just thinking about the uh, US elections or the elections in um, in Britain or Australia, uh, even New Zealand. Um, it's a, a, the contrast, you couldn't get a greater contrast between Singapore and those countries that I mentioned. I mean, look at the US, it's, um, it's almost like world championship wrestling, isn't it? Yes, I, I think, you know, you know, Mike, each country has to find what is it, uh, you know, that, that works for them. And, and I would say that no uh, electoral system is, is static. Um, you know, so over time, you know, there is the need, uh, you know, for electoral systems, if they are to remain relevant, if they are to be seen to be free and fair, you know, that rules will also have to evolve. You know, so in the Singapore context, for example, um, you know, the, the, we have for the first time, you know, televised debates in, in English and in Mandarin, uh, partly to account for the fact that there wouldn't be uh, fiscal rallies. Um, we also had for the first time uh, constituency political broadcasts, you know, so this is where uh, candidates for the different constituencies, you know, would have the opportunity, opportunity on national TV, uh, you know, to share their plans and proposals. And certainly, you know, the opposition parties also took the, took the opportunity, you know, to, to criticize the ruling party for, uh, you know, a variety on a variety of issues. Um, I think in, in Singapore, you know, we, we, we don't look at um, politics as, as a sport, uh, you know, in, in which there, there is a fair amount of, of um, you know, very personal uh, attacks and all. Um, that is not to say that this hasn't happened in Singapore, um, but I think it certainly did, uh, you know, create some amount of unhappiness, you know, whether the attacks were seen to have originated from the ruling party um, or the opposition. Um, but I think it, it reflects, you know, a, a, an electorate that is maturing. Um, and, and obviously, you know, um, Singaporeans have the opportunity to compare uh, our system, you know, with that of Australia, New Zealand, uh, the US or the UK. Um, and, and, and I think ultimately, you know, we will see the electoral system uh, evolving uh, with time and with circumstances. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Lung's younger brother joined an opposition party but did not contest. 
Do you think his involvement in the Progress Singapore Party gave them much of a lift? I, I think, you know, certainly to, to some extent, um, you know, he, so you have here, um, you know, the younger brother of, uh, of Prime Minister Lee Sen Lung, you know, the, the youngest child of uh, the late uh, Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew. And for Mr. Lee Sen Yang, you know, to be a member of the opposition party, uh, you know, to campaign on behalf of, uh, you know, an opposition party that was established, you know, primarily because uh, the leaders took the view, uh, you know, that the ruling party is no longer the same ruling party that Lee Kuan Yew founded. Um, I think that, uh, you know, would uh, make voters uh, pay attention. Um, but it still remains to be seen, you know, what sort of impact uh, his involvement uh, in the campaign uh, had been. Uh, you know, he, he has been very prudent, you know, not to talk about uh, the dispute that he has, uh, you know, with his elder brother over the, the, the family home. Um, and so, you know, it, it relates more to national issues, you know, the sort of system, you know, uh, governance system that we should have here, and, and also whether there are adequate uh, checks and balances in a one-party dominant system. How long and what will it take, do you think, to see opposition parties either coming together or becoming strong enough to win a significant number of seats? No, Mike, I, I think it's a question of whether, uh, of when, you know, rather than whether. Um, you know, so the, 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 the bigger question is, you know, the, the, the sort of pace in which we will see, you know, the opposition uh, winning more seats, um, you know, and Singapore developing into a two-party or a multi-party uh, parliamentary democracy. Um, I think it's really crucial for, for the opposition, um, you know, to, to consolidate. Uh, you know, at this point in time, you know, we have 10 opposition parties, uh, you know, seeking votes in Singapore. Um, and I think for a for a small democracy of only about 2.65 million voters, um, that is probably way too many parties. Um, but the Progress Singapore Party, the party in which uh, Mr. Lee Sien Yang is a member of, uh, if they do well in, in their first election, in this particular election, um, then I think, you know, we might see, um, you know, a further consolidation uh, you know, of the opposition ranks. Uh, you know, we have the leading uh, Workers' Party. Uh, you know, the Workers' Party is the leading opposition party in Singapore. Um, and if the Progress Singapore Party were to make significant inroads, uh, then I, I, I would say that, you know, that could render uh, many of the other smaller parties uh, somewhat inconsequential or perhaps even irrelevant to the political landscape. Uh, and I think that's where, you know, we might see, you know, that consolidation. Um, but the current system as it is, you know, with, with one party being significantly or overwhelmingly dominant uh, is something that Singaporeans are beginning to question for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, it, it's, not a, a, it's, it's not so much that, you know, the system is breaking down, you know, but the question of whether uh, you know, governance can even be better, um, you know, whether, um, whether it would be too risky, you know, to put all the eggs, uh, you know, in one basket. Um, and so I think in that light, you know, the, the, the evolution of uh, the Singapore political system, uh, I think is moving in the right direction. It's uh, interesting times. Um, I probably could think of other words than, than interesting, but I'll be polite, uh, Eugene. Uh, great chatting with you. Uh, once, the, um, once we're allowed to fly and uh, come out of our Australia jail or Queensland jail or the uh, United States jail, would love to be able to pop over to Singapore and uh, see your beautiful country and uh, enjoy the, uh, the wonderful people. Eugene, thank you very much. Well, thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me.